Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for joining us on the Daily Social Distancing Show. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. No, very well. You are an infectious diseases expert who has advised six presidents on everything from SARS to Ebola to the HIV uh, epidemic and Zika. What makes coronavirus so different? Well, it's different because, you know, when people used to ask me over the years, what is it that I most worry about with regard to emerging infectious diseases is a respiratory borne illness that easily spreads from person to person, but that has a high degree of morbidity and mortality. And unfortunately, that's the worst nightmare you could have is to have something like that. I mean, there are other diseases. Ebola was frightening, but Ebola gets transmitted only when you're in very close contact with a person who is very, very ill. With this disease, in some respects similar to influenza, but in some respects very different, it spreads very easily. You can even right. spread it when you're not symptomatic. So it's insidious and treacherous in that you could spread it easily. The other part about it that's really so different from anything that we've ever faced before is that if you look at the mortality of seasonal flu, the thing that you and I go through every season, the mortality is about 0.1%. That's a lot. And we get used to that morbidity and mortality. But the mortality of this is about 10 times that. It's at least 1%. So it's, it, it's a disease that not only is easily spread, but it can be devastating, particularly for a certain subset of the population. Demographically different. The elderly, those with underlying conditions, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes. It can be very serious for them with a high degree of mortality. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the information in and around Corona that's, that's I think, getting people confused. I, I see so many conflicting ideas online and I guess the, the, the horrible byproduct of having social media and the internet is everyone is now an expert and everyone has an opinion. I know this is very basic for you, but just to help everyone be on the same page, how can we catch Corona and what are the areas we should be most concerned about? So we know about human to human transmission. Most people understand that, but I see people online worried about grocery shopping, touching packages that they receive from Amazon. Do people need to wipe them down? When they're in the grocery store, can they touch other things? How long does coronavirus last in the air? For instance, if you walk into an elevator after somebody else, can coronavirus still be there? What do we need to be on the lookout for as individuals? Okay, there's very degrees of risk, Trevor, of that in, in every respect. But the things that are the most common that you really wanna latch onto is that sneezing and coughing. When someone is ill, they've gotta get themselves out of circulation because they can spread by droplets and even by what we call aerosol which means the drop doesn't go down right away. It hangs around for a bit. So you could come into a room thinking everything is all right, and then you inhale it. That's likely not the primary way. The primary way is probably droplet. But another way that's very important is handshaking. When people naturally go <clears throat> like that, they cough, and then it's innocent. There's nothing on their hand. They shake your hand or they open a doorknob, and that's the thing. You don't want to be obsessive compulsive about wiping everything down that you go near, but one of the real bad actors is somebody who just opens a door, and then 15 minutes later, because we know the virus can live on inanimate hard objects like steel or plastic right. for at least several hours. So that's the thing you've got to be careful of. That's one of the reasons why, if you really want to be careful, besides the social distancing of six right. feet, don't shake anybody's hands. Just lose that for a while. And wash your hands as often as you can because you may be inadvertently touching something. Now, your other question, Trevor, that's important, is that I don't think we need to get completely obsessed about packages that come in because those types of surfaces, the virus might live there for a very short time, but people say, should I, should I get a package from a grocery store that says made in China? I wouldn't worry about that. That's not the issue. It's more the close things, the hand washing. What is the biggest warning you would give to the general public about trying to self-medicate or, or is there any cure that people actually have discovered? What, as, as a leading health expert, what do you say about this issue? So right now, today, as we speak, there is no proven safe and effective direct therapy for coronavirus disease for sure. There are a number of clinical trials that are trying to 
by randomized controlled trials, get a definitive answer as to what works and what does work, not work, what's safe, what's not safe. Superimposed upon that, there are drugs that are already approved for other things, like hydroxychloroquine for malaria and for certain autoimmune diseases, that there have been anecdotal stories. By anecdotal, I mean people kind of think they work, but they haven't really proven they work. That's right. really gotten out there on the internet, so people are very enthusiastic since generally these drugs appear to be safe, and they are, but they do have some toxicities. So a lot of people want a drug even though it's not proven, just in case it might help them. You gotta be careful about that for a couple of reasons. You don't wanna take that drug off the market for the people who really need it, who have the diseases it's used for. And on the other hand, there may be some toxicity. That's the reason why we're pushing to try and get as many good clinical trials as possible to prove if it works. If it does, then get it out there really fast for everybody. Got it. Yeah, the virus is the clock, uh, Trevor. <laughs> So people say may arbitrarily, well, in two weeks, we're going to be okay. It depends on the kinetics of the outbreak. Right now, take New York City. They are getting hit really hard, and the uh -huh. kinetics of the outbreak is going there. You can't predict when it'll make that turnaround and start coming down. In general, if you look historically at, at countries that have been through the whole cycle, in China, it was about eight weeks or so before it went way up and then way down. In Korea, the same thing. So if you look at each individual country, and being a big country as we are here in the United States, we're almost like a lot of little countries, like New York in itself can be considered a country. California right. can be considered a country. So it's unpredictable about when you can say this cycle. It's usually measured in several weeks, sometimes when you're into the cycle, you may only be two to three weeks away before it starts to turn around. Right? right. Okay. So then to that point, that's then my second of the four questions. Second question is, is New York City really harder hit or is New York's testing making the numbers spike up? And is this something that we're going to see start trending throughout America? Well, there are a couple of good questions right in there. New York is more hardly hit for sure. The nature of the city, the crowding of the city, the fact that you get the beginning of your outbreak when you get influx from other countries. China was the index country that came in. New York is a travel hub of the country. So clearly we had a lot of cases come in. By the time they realized what they were dealing with, they had already gotten a sucker punch and they really were, were, were playing catch up. They didn't do anything wrong. They're not very different except that they're a big robust city. And because of that, they're getting hit hard. Okay. And then this Second last question is with regards to reinfection and immunity. We talk about people who have it and are asymptomatic. We talk about people who are recovering and we're st starting to see those numbers grow around the world. Do we know yet if getting Corona and surviving Corona means that you're now immune to the disease or is there a chance of reinfection? Uh, we don't know that for 100% certain because we haven't done the study to see re-challenges, whether they've been protected. But I feel really confident that if this virus acts like every other virus that we know, once you get infected, get better, clear the virus, that you'll have immunity that will protect you against reinfection. So it's never 100%, but I'd be willing to bet anything that people who recover are really protected against reinfection. Thank you so much for your time. I really, I really hope everyone understands how important it is to listen to you.